Hello, I'll add this video to the recent series. You'll find the links to the previous uh, videos in the description. And that's, uh, again, this uh, Core 7, which is uh, so important in, in regards to you know, evidence for lost tie technology, cannot be done with primitive techniques, therefore evidence of lost tie technology. The uh, main points have already been covered previously in this series. So you saw examples such as the flywheel drill, which again exists in the archaeological record, and how this particular type of drill matches all the supposed smoking gun signatures of uh, Core 7. It's impossible, therefore, but it's not only possible, it's been replicated, and it is based in, uh, in tools and materials known to exist. So tapering uh, was part one really of this series and that uh, the tapering of a cause is not a signature of anything mysterious tapering of a cause is actually essentially proof of primitive techniques to do it you cannot re replicate it with modern tools but you can perfectly not only replicate it with primitive hand operated tools it is unavoidable to find this signature uh, with primitive tools it's so sorted that one uh, I'll link again this paper in the description because it's so often quoted. Um, Penn State paper from 1983. And now, for instance, uh, so the point of this video is to explain why these grooves are happening. This will be directly connected to the striations, um, well, the grooves, but also the uh, the appearance of spirals, which can be rep replicated, and I'll go into depth more once some new information I'm just wait that should be released any day and then I can incorporate that and explain and demonstrate perfectly why the there appears to be a spiral on there it's again uh, essentially unavoidable if you want to create a really high quality core um, but these two photos again which show, you know they're using a, a micro microscope to look down at these these grooves these patterns now why are they happening and also, well, they sort of give it away here because now, for instance, uh, in this paper they mention, now, again, these were very small cores done with a machine, uh, with a high-speed modern drill, not with hand tools. So that's why these cores don't look anything like Core 7. Uh, but they do point out that using different abrasives leaves different patterns. Now, for instance, diamond, if you're drilling either wet or dry, so you're using diamond dust and you can use it in like a water or it make or you could use it dry diamond still will leave these cuts but um emery uh, the lines in the inner outer walls are evident these occurred when the emery was used wet with olive oil or with water or with olive oil or with a modern lubricant um fine date so the type of lubricant you're using whether it's water it essentially has to be done wet so that's if it's done dry, as with the Dennis Stocks experiment or the Christopher Dunn air quotes experiment, it's got it's not going to happen. Uh, it has to be done wet unless you're doing it with diamond. Um, but emery or corundum, which was known to be used throughout antiquity, is the, uh, there are corundite stone vases, and even the mine of corundum, for instance, in Egypt. Again, just it's really. Uh, the Greeks were importing corundum from India for their stonework. That's how, you know, it's, it's, uh, they also had some local sources, but uh, the, the Indian sand, or as the Greeks, uh, Romans called it, African sand, Ethiopian sand, was also being imported because of the quality of it leads to the stonework. Now, so we see this image here, again, with um, using a to, uh, microscope to highlight it drilled with a soft so stone using flint uh, the shape of the grooves now again this is can be sort of very easily explained and it's again in the conclusion of this paper um, fixed abrasives or those in a watery slurry or a lubricant such as olive oil did produce uh, concentric cutting lines now concentric we'll get to because that's directly you know directly related related to the helix uh, because in essence, the, those lines are concentric, they're just angled, and I'll show you with multiple examples of my own how it appears that a helix up is there, a spiral, but it's not really the case. But anyway, that will be for, just waiting for the release of that. Now, with my drilling, that was, um, yeah, I'm using a piece of black granite, but you can see again a flywheel drill, 
and it's used, I'm using water. Um, there's another example when I'm drilling in red granite and I used a, a very coarse grit, but in water and as you drill, it grinds down into a very fine slurry. So that's why my, even though I was using a much coarser grit than what Christopher Dunn was using, I still managed to achieve a polish because I didn't blow it out each time. And I, firstly, I was using water and I didn't continually re remove the old finer grit in favour of very coarse grit, but uh, that was covered earlier. Here's some examples of the grooves that I've um, uh, there. And again, because it's, well, it's really the, the essence of it is water. I'll link again this description, the Scientist Against Smith channel, any moment. Now they're going to release some really important information regarding Core 7. But uh, they also used a flywheel drill. I just, I was sitting down, they were standing up. And also the weight, because uh, for instance, at that point I was using a lighter weight and so the weight of the drill will also affect the, the shape of the cores so uh, I've just recently shifted to, shifted to a much heavier weight and I am now achieving you know, I get a different type of um, depth of the core uh, the depth of the grooves in there but what is essentially the answer and again that's uh, one of their experiments again where we get a polished surface but also the deep you can get deep lines and a polished surface at the same time. Just again, you can add fresh abrasive to get the deep cuts, but you'll with the older, finer grit, you're going to get the polished surface, but that was covered earlier. I'll link this paper again, uh, which shows, you now that's one example. This also shows, again, these deep cut marks. Now, why are these grooves happening? What causes them? So that's Core 7. There's the um, Scientist Against Smith example. And here's one of mine just where I've used a chalk just to highlight those uh, cutting patterns in there as well. And the answer is fluvial erosion or fluvial abrasion. But now what I mean is, so when, when you start cutting, even with a really finer grit, just like this river, it's, it, it's, well, it's creating all little channels. But the further the river goes down, the channels get reduced until you have essentially one stream. So you start with all these microscopic scratches, uh, and then, you know, through chaos, some channels get deeper than others. They attract more water, which attracts more, again, abrasion. Uh, so the deeper it gets, the more, say, for instance, if you're drilling, the fine grit starts with the cutting, and then the deeper the groove gets, it allows in an Firstly, more grit and larger grit, more water, more action is happening and it starts, so all these little channels, they get bigger and they get bigger until they, they create a groove such as this. So that's what's happening. Another example would be like pouring water on sand. All these little streams, little rivulets start forming, but then they start to coalesce and you'll start to get deeper channels. So that's in a macro scale. So whether it's water on sand or across a floodplain, um, in the microscopic scale, that's what's happening on the drill. Uh, now, fluvial abrasion, again, I'll link all this uh, in there. So, for instance, this canyon. So, just like the grooves in the in the drill. So, there's an, you can, so uh, erosion or abrasion, you'll see different layers. If there are different strata, for instance, there's a softer stone between a harder stone and then repeat, you will get a difference in there. But even... I'll show you better examples in a moment, but even when you have one strata of stone, it's all the same quality stone, uh, you'll see how these cuts form, and the, the more the cut forms, the, the deeper it grows in comparison to the shallower one. So that's viewing the canyon from the top, and you'll see the same effect viewed from the top as what you'll see viewed from the inside of the canyon. Fluvial erosion or fluvial abrasion, so even in potholes, for instance, uh, now famous, now if you're following, uh, for instance, the, uh, the ice age floods in, um, the northeast of America, where you see these massive scale of the undulations, just like on smaller scale, you see the undulating sand when water flows over it, and then from the air, you can see over the scab lands that happening again. There are also potholes all over that part, so whether it's a beach pothole or a large pothole, a small hole develops, that creates an eddy, all little rocks start spinning around, and they drill down into, whether it's the beach rock or on the floodplain, and then these little stones, and the same drilling process, so with, with copper, whatever is spinning the abrasive around, whether it's a copper tube or whether it's a, the 
the eddy, the whirlpool created by the movement of water, all the little rocks, the abrasive, the grit. So whether it's a giant pothole or a smaller pothole, all the abrasive starts spinning around and drills it out. And again, the undulations, um, the different grooves develop through that. That's fluvial is water, liquid or fluid. So, um, so again, fluid, whether it's oil, um, or water is so important in the creation of this process. Now you can see the same thing happening here. This is in uh, Utah where there's those famous canyons as well. So it's not just different strata of rock where one will erode quicker than the other. You can also see it in the same strata where these grooves develop as the flash flooding comes down. Wind would also be affecting this over the long term, but uh, this image, so flash flooding in Utah canyons is, you know, often leads to deaths, for instance. Here's another example. Again, you very clearly can see the stone and these grooves. This is just on the macro scale, but it's happening on a micro scale when you're drilling. Uh, in China, we see a similar thing, and here's a better example. So just like that's just a larger version of what's happening when we're drilling down with whether the material's PVC, uh, copper, or steel. Um, it's the abra it's not the not the steel, it's not the PVC, it's not the copper that's drilling. It's the sand and in water you're going to develop so flash flooding comes through and that's what's creating these uh, canyons whether it's a tiny canyon in, in stone I'll link again that tubular principles of tubular free abrasive so they've used the copper tube to cut down and they've cut that in half and you can see the the grooves there and again it's essentially it's the same thing you could just try you know if I was to shrink this guy down and he could walk through the uh, uh, granite cores drilled by the Scientists Against Smith team or my own, and you're going to see the same uh, thing happening there. And here's just another pitch. So again, those, both the inside of the core and the core itself, having these grooves cut in them. So it starts on a very small scale. One channel gets, or one groove gets a little bit more action than the other. The bigger it gets, the more, the more it erodes down. So again, just like a river valley uh, or pouring water over a flat piece of sand, um, that's what happens. So again, those one of my granite cords, or I've just used chalk to highlight it, that's what's happening there. Again, those um, microscope photos of the uh, granite cores, whether it's ancient or modern, the same thing's happening, and we see those grooves there. So that's basically what's happening. There's one of my... Um, cores and again you can see it because I was used I use water and free abrasive so just like a pothole in a river that's why it's it is not a fix you do not need a fixed point to create these uh, they are just a byproduct of of free abrasive as well if it has a fixed well the, the issue with fixed point it need tremendous pressures and force to create that fixed point and you'd have to replace because even if it was with diamond at that type of pressure, the diamond would be fracturing and breaking up into small pieces only after a slight turn. So uh, that it was a fixed point, <laughs> no, it's, no, no, it's just, uh, it doesn't stay, at least with diamond, it doesn't stand up that you could do that with a, a fixed point. Um, that's Even with diamond drills, modern drills, they spin hundreds or thousands of times to go down a short distance. Uh, there is no fixed point diamond tool that can drill down anywhere near to that point it just does not exist the diamond or the ruby or the sapphire whatever you're using would just absolutely shatter underneath those pressures it wouldn't last uh, one tenth of a turn let, let alone multiple turns so again uh, free abrasive in some sort of lubricant water uh, creates these grooves and it's fluvial erosion fluvial abrasion get replicated multiple times multiple independent experiments have done this I'll put a uh, links in the description again to you know again just, just describing the process how I do it and so you can avoid the early mistakes I made and that's what causes these grooves fluvial abrasion and it's again in a in the lab but also in other like and this will lead also to why there are apparent spirals in there and I'll explain that in the next one once that release but it's got to do with almost for sure core 7 was using uh, the lubricated method 
and using a flywheel drill uh, rather than a bow drill. But anyway, that'll be more to come. Cheers. That explains it. Have a good one.